Hello friends, this is Terry from Yankee Gaming TV. This will be our review for Yokai Watch Y Academy Episode 13, which is Lord of the Pink Capture the Incinerator Mountain or Lord of the Pink Shokyakudo Mountain o before we dive into the actual review itself, I just want to touch on something that just kind of came up in my life earlier. I, well today, in fact, I went out to get into my car to drive over to my grandmother's house because I wanted to do what was right by visiting my family. I went out and my passenger side mirror is basically completely off, shattered into uh, tons of pieces and needless to say, the pieces are spread in an array that makes it look like a vandalism. I'm, I'm not begging for money, but my deductible to get that repaired is $500. I am going to have my Streamlab link down below if you're liking this content and you want a way to support me you do not have to I want to clarify you don't have to donate anything to me but I was just bringing this up just so you all know that if you wanted to donate something to like this time might be your best opportunity if you're like feeling hesitant because I do have a need. I need to get that repaired. And it's not that I don't have the money to do that. It's just I have the money but I also have other financial things to get taken care of. Like my car's original repair. I still have to pay that and do that. And this is like a separate deductible thing that came up because someone decided to drive by my car and either clunk mirrors together or they decided to get out and vandalize my mirror by smacking it with a bat or a blunt object. Yet again you guys do not need to donate anything if you don't feel inclined to. I'm just bringing this up in the Yokai Watch review and in my Pokemon review. It's going to be a one and done deal for both of them. I won't bring it up again but let's dive into the review itself. Episode 13 feels rather lackluster to me. It's not bad, it's not good, and there is hentai in the Y Academy hood. Basically what goes on is the episode starts off with three high school boys, or junior high school boys, finding hentai. Or basically something that's really, really close to being hentai. That probably is classified as like hentai edgy stuff. So, we have that that's going on. We have the school's principal denying the fact that it's his. I think they were saying the lady's name is Momoka-chan. That that's who's, who's actually in it. But I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, it's basically her. Her book or her Gravor or whatever you want to call the magazine it's basically her in the swimsuits which is really close to borderline creepy for the principal of the school to be looking at unless he's trying hard to figure out what this girl stands for to pull the her into joining Y Academy which is one of the lines he uses later on but he reaches out to the boys to try to talk them into helping him get rid of this because he's tried to throw it away, he's tried to discard it, he's tried to do everything in his power to prevent his lovely daughter, little Miss Emma Chan, from seeing that her, or yeah, Emma, lovely Miss Emma, Miss Emma Chan, from seeing her father as a lecher, as a pervert, as a horrible person. So yeah, it's all about avoiding that situation entirely. And we do get a flashback at what 
kind of caused the situation. Emma, Miss Emma running into her father's office and him slamming the book and hiding it. Turns out something got in between the pages and he accidentally killed it. So we, we get a little bit of backstory. The boys agree to help. But Fubuki was blacklisted because he did not want her to be involved in any of this whatsoever because he felt like she would think worse of him as a principal. But, 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 the girls do not let the slide. Fubuki recruits Emma. And you're looking at me like, why would Fubuki recruit Emma? It's just the thing that happened. I feel like Emma was suspicious of her father this entire time. And she wanted to get to the bottom of all of this, of his sec secrecy, of him being kind of different with her. But they go to Incinerator Mountain, which is probably one of the lamest places to ever go. But I I'm Terry, and I, I don't really know what's lame and what's not lame in this situation. But we get a lot of jokes. Jinpei shows the principal his underwear because there's a frog on his desk that matches the underwear. So, yeah, this episode review is going to be much shorter than what I had thought. We get a funny Orangakang reference. We have all of the boys trying to hide it. Sandayu Komas is the most... I don't want to say cliche, but he would have done what I would have done. I would have tried to put it in the recycling or in, like, the trash bin. Mataro. Mataro failed us. It, it's because of him that the magazine came hopping back. Oh, I just referenced what it might have been. I'm sorry. But they go to Trash Compactor Mountain. They find someone's notebook or their Niki, which is like a diary. And the diary talks about a certain love connection that we're going to get into. Kan Kanichi Okehazama X Mai Chono, which I support this. This is the only ship I support in this situation. Because they would be cute together. I mean, it's gonna happen. It needs to happen. And they were both introduced, like, way back in, like, episode 2 or episode 3. Can we please have this happen? That's that's all I'm happening. And as you guys might remember, my Chono, or Cho, yeah, Chono is a cheerleader, while Kanichi Okehazama is, like, I think he's, like, a bodybuilder or a sumo guy. I'm not entirely sure. I don't remember. Yeah, I think he's a bodybuilder or like part of some sort of athletics club at the school. But we're going to continue on because we're not stalling for time or momentum. We get to the top of the mountain. The girls see the boys going up. The boys decide to trash surf and ride the conveyor belt up. They try to throw it in at first. It did not work because it came hopping back. They tried to catapult the book, but Fubuki catches it like a wide receiver running a slant play, dodging all of the defenders. And the girls do a no means no poster when a son and someone tries to smooth talk them into giving him the book. Yeah. You just gotta love when. When someone tries to do a charisma roll or a charisma check, like I'm doing a D&D &D reference right now. QB tried to roll a 20 and he rolled a one instead because both Emma and Fubuki do the no means no posture. But this is sometime right after Emma catches little commander as if he's like a little beetle or a little butterfly in a net. It's so cliche, but this actually worked. It worked plot-wise. So, 
So Matoro was used as a hostage in the situation as well, but that didn't work because Fubuki doesn't care. So the magazine was launched into the blazing inferno but came hopping back. The boys protect our loving principal, who was not savable at this time because we are also introduced to our new on the all, Kamagaidu, which I think it deprives from shrug or toad and sickle or scythe because it isn't Kama scythe or sickle. I know that Kaidu or Gaidu refers to like a toad, I think, or partially to a toad. Uh, I don't know tons of etymology, I just kind of know enough. So we do the fight here, we take down the giant toad on Leo with a team effort. Because obviously the circles need to be held in place for Kingo Benimaru to unload a slash, then we get a tragic backstory that this froggy which, or toad was going to be dissected. But our loving, caring, compassionate principal saves the little one and then kills kills little the little froggy by 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 hentai smashing it in between pages of a book. But I want to point out that these medals seem like some of the most promising ones. Also, the the leaf umbrella one is kind of cute, and we have a Naruto reference as one of them believe it. And then at the end of the episode, our amazing principal covers off the fact that he has been looking at this book on and off, like, for like, at least a week, is what's implied here, like, throughout the episode, because he's had it multiple times, via multiple different instances, and he comes up with this excuse as, I'm trying to learn more about her so we can get her as a member of our student body. Yeah, don't you just gotta love Japanese logic because that that's basically how things were set up. Kills pet frog and everyone is okay. Yeah, I don't get it either. But yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you all have a fantastic morning, afternoon, and or evening. Bye bye for now.